sex for favors, secrets, cover-ups, corruption. I've heard things that'll blow your mind, and now I think it's time you get the whole story. I'm Jesse Ventura, and this is Quinspiracy Theory. The video I was originally going to upload tonight is gone. I've scrapped it, it's deleted. I've decided to do something different because of this. What you're looking at is a copyright claim against a YouTube user by the name of Mundane Matt on a video called Hell Hath No Fury Like a Lover Scorned. That copyright claim was filed by Zoe Quinn, the person who is the subject of the video itself. Now in the copyright claim, she had stated that he'd used a still image of her game, Depression Quest, which she's a creator of, and that she had ownership over that, and that's why the video needed to be pulled down, because it was infringing on her intellectual property. But the truth is, it had nothing to do with that. The image Matt used in his video, and it was just one image, I want to show you his typical format. This is a typical video that Monday and Matt will put up. You have a still image in the background, you have a transparent barrier on the left hand side with a title, and he talks over it. And that is exactly what Hell Hath No Fury was. It had a still image in the background, a transparent barrier, title, and he talked over it. Now the image he used was a publicly available image. This game is out on Steam. You can see these images. They've been used in news articles, they've been posted on websites, they're publicly available through the company on Steam itself. So her copyright claim had nothing to do with him using her intellectual property. What it had to do with was suppressing information from getting out. And that's something that's been going on now for the last three days since this began. Sites like Reddit and NeoGAF and even 4chan on certain boards have suppressed this from being talked about because of the implications it has in the gaming industry. Now what started all of this off was a WordPress blog called The Zoe Post. This was put up by a man named Aaron who is Zoe Quinn's ex-boyfriend. In the entirety of the blog post, which is extraordinarily long, he goes through a laundry list of complaints as to why the relationship failed and why he's upset. Now, these all seem to be valid to me, things like lying and manipulation and infidelity. However, at face value, it's nothing more than that. Why, why would that be interesting? So is she taking videos down because she's embarrassed about it? No, she's taking them down because of the people she slept with, that she cheated on him with during their relationship and who they are, and specifically what they can do for her as an entrepreneur, gaming journalism has reached a low point over the last five years. It started with pieces that had nothing to do with gaming or game reviews, nothing to do with software or hardware, nothing to do with events or expos. It started to travel off into the areas of social justice and feminism and opinion pieces and op-eds that had nothing to do with gaming. It started to have authors who were writing pieces condemning the gaming audience as being sexist and misogynistic, as being racist and bigoted, as being overly violent rapist. This has been seen on Kotaku, on Rock Paper Shotgun, on Destructoid, on The Escapist, on any website you can name this has been transpiring for the last five years. It seems more and more these outlier pieces have become the standard and that the narrative put forward in them has become cohesive and refined, like a talking point targeted at us as the audience. And there's a reason for that. And Zoe Quinn and what's happened over the last three days helps to point that out. That is why this is important and it needs to be talked about. This has nothing to do with her as a person in a relationship. I don't care that Zoe Quinn fucked five guys. I don't care that Zoe Quinn cheats on people she's in a relationship with. That's on her. That's her own personal accountability. Her ethical and moral failures as an individual are for her and her partner to deal with. However, when the people she's having an affair with, when the people she's cheating on her boyfriend with, happen to be able to help her career through their actions related to the industry that she's in, then it becomes a piece of public discourse and it becomes important because it helps to highlight a massive flaw in the fifth estate. Now, if you're like me, you've grown up watching mainstream media, television media, die a death. And it didn't just die this death because of the invention of the internet. It died because of its lack of ethical standards. I'd be surprising no one by telling them that Fox News and MSNBC and CNN and every other mainstream media source you can name is corrupt. We've seen this happen and we've seen the result of their reporting afterwards. Backroom relationships, money changing hands, manipulation, uh, illicit acts have slanted old media to the point where it's unreliable and no one trusts it. So when the fifth estate emerged, when we had internet journalism, we felt like we had something we could believe in. We were going to report to each other. We were going to be the honest people. We weren't going to let other outside factors influence truth. But it has not happened that way. And what took a century 
to kill old media has taken mere years to undermine new media. So let's start at the beginning and see what the hell is going on here and why this keeps being pushed down and why nobody's talking about it. Now, Zoe Quinn's notoriety extends quite a ways back. As I stated earlier, she's an indie developer. She released a game on Steam called Depression Quest and reading the description it states, it is a flash text-based adventure game about a person living with depression and how situations affect them. Who doesn't want to play a game about being fucking depressed? I rank that right up there with gems like I Have the Chicken Pox and the hit sequel I Have Shingles Now. Oh God, does it hurt? Yet this is a game she pushed through Greenlight. How did she get it through Greenlight? In fact, how did this game even get on Steam? Well, if you trace this back to its origins, when she was originally developing it, she started to get a lot of press because she was harassed. She was the victim of a sexist campaign by evil denizens of a website called Wizard Chan. Now, Wizard Chan, for those of you who are unfamiliar with this website, is a image board dedicated to the movie Hocus Pocus. They are Disney fucking fanatics over at Wizard Chan. But apparently, they have an issue, they have a major issue with Zoe Quinn and her game. And she went to Twitter, and she went to social media talking about how she's being persecuted and harassed, how people are calling her house and showing up in real life, how it's unnerving her, and how terrible this is. And what do you know, the gaming journalists, gaming press, jumped to her rescue. Sites like GamerRanks and Kotaku and Rock Paper Shotgun all talked about how brave she was. Even other people with notoriety in the gaming scene right now were sending her messages of encouragement, like Anita Sarkeesian and Dina from the Project Mighty No. 9. Another person who, might I add, fucked her way into a position at a company. Now that sounds all fucking well and good, except it's completely untrue. And I can prove to you that it's untrue with the link in the description. Go check that out. It's an Imager album. And it is a chronological explanation of why Zoe Quinn is full of shit and why this website Wizard Chan didn't target her. Now this is important because it helps to establish her character. And we're going to be getting into that in a minute. But what you really need to glean from this is that she was supported by the gaming press and by other certain indie developers and other notorious people like Anita Sarkeesian against these hordes of horrible trolls that apparently were trying to keep her down because obviously a video game about depression just is too much for a troll. Now, if you fast forward a certain amount of time, the game finally gets through Greenlight and it gets up on Steam despite numerous people saying they didn't like the game, they didn't think it belonged on Steam, the community voicing their opinion against it, different websites dedicated to video games saying that it shouldn't be on Steam, it doesn't make sense, that it's a non-game. A similar argument that's been raised for other indie developed titles that were supported by the gaming press, like Gone Home and others. Yet, she got it through, and the game got up on Steam. And that is where our WordPress blog, The Zoe Post, comes into play. Because now we get to see it from the perspective of somebody who knows her personally, namely Aaron, and their relationship. Now the interesting thing about the Zoe Post blog is that it chronicles and has captures of interactions on social media. And we get to see what kind of person Zoe Quinn is. And we get to see how she's a liar and a manipulator. And how the people at Wizard Chan who put together that album that's linked in the description weren't really bullshitting you when they said she's fucking making it up. Now at the heart of the Zoe post, aside from all the things that Aaron wrote down about her, aside from her white lies and her omissions of truth besides the uh, deceitful behavior and manipulation, is the infidelity. And he names specifically three people in his post. He omits two names. Of course, due to technological wizardry of other people, those two names have been found. And so this is a list of five guys. And again, I'm not putting their names out there because I think it's wrong she cheated in a relationship. I'm putting those names out there to show you, or to start to show you, how corrupt gaming journalism and game development have become. These are the five guys. Now, to start with, on the very far right-hand side is Joshua Boggs. Now, he was her boss. She had sex with him while she was in a relationship with Aaron. The interesting thing is, Joshua Boggs is married. So not only was she having sex with her employer, she was having sex with a man who's married. This didn't cause her a crisis of conscience, even though she's made statements in the past on social media, saying how wrong it is to have affairs, how terrible it is to cheat on somebody when you're married. But again, as a liar, she says one thing, and does another. Some other names that are listed there are Robin Arnott and Kyle Pulver, both indie game devs. You have Brandon McCartan, multi-award winning indie game dev prodigy for Fez and Aquaria. That's interesting on its own for some things that happened just yesterday, but I'll get to that in a minute. But really, the biggest fucking issue that we're looking at right now is the name in the middle, Nathan Grayson. Who is Nathan Grayson? And why is it important we talk about his and Zoe's relationship? Nathan Grayson is a video game journalist. Nathan Grayson 
is somebody who wrote for Rock Paper Shotgun and currently writes for Kotaku. Nathan Grayson is somebody who has published positive pieces about Zoe's game, who has given her publicity and who has marketed her product while having sex with her and not disclosing it. Now, there's a word for people when there's a professional conflict and they need to step back from what they do as a job because of conflicting things. It's called recusing oneself. Nathan Grayson not only did not recuse himself from writing the articles that fluffed up her product and promoted her, he went so far as to hide the fact that they had a relationship. Here you see an example of just two pieces he wrote this year, one on Rock Paper Shotgun and one on Kotaku, talking about her product and her specifically. This starts to show a pattern of behavior in game journalism. These people have no professional barrier which exists between their relationships. It's not just that game developers and game journalists have friendships or that they communicate or that they cooperate and do things together. They are having illicit sexual relationships which benefit one another. Nathan Grayson has benefited by being able to write an article that will get him clicks and thereby ad revenue. Zoe Quinn is able to get publicity and make money. It is a disgusting relationship and it is the opposite of what journalism is meant to be but it goes much deeper than that it's not just that they have relationships where one hand washes the other it's that they bolster up positive public publicity and also suppress negative publicity what i'm going to show you now is a screen cap from a subreddit that was talking about zoe quinn this was posted just a few days ago and the subreddit i believe tumblr in action this is mind-blowing and it starts to show you just how fucking sick and twisted and corrupt game journalism is. So here's the post in question and this is by Silly Slater. I'm gonna read this verbatim and I really want you to take in what she's saying and then I'll focus on the really disgusting part of this. So Silly Slater posts, she fucking doxed me, ruined a production for women, refused to contact us and is currently taking money for a game jam with no start date, no location and no judges. Okay here is my story. We ran a group that literally said, any woman come up with an idea for a video game, we'll give you concept art so you can pitch your game, and we'll put all the pitches online. The internet will vote on the best one, and we'll make that game and give the profits to charity. If you get a lot of interest online and want to make the game on your own, you can leave the contest at any time. Literally everyone that was in the top five didn't have programming experience, so they couldn't make their own game. She was like, why do you expect women to work for free to make games? We said, well, they get 8% of the money as royalties, and they just have to give an idea. Other people will make the game, and the profits go to charity. Doesn't matter, it's oppressive. She started a fucking Twitter storm, crashed our website, got my personal information doxxed, got us banned from Twitter. We email reporters, what's up, and they're like, duh, if Zoe says it's oppressive, it must be true. Maybe you should give her money for Rebel Jam, which has no start date, location, or any other information, but totally isn't a scam. This happens at three other major publications. We literally said we'd pay her to consult on future projects, and we'd close down the contest if she would explain to us what exactly is offensive. No response. No response at all. Unless a reporter contacted her, and then she's the victim. All this information is fucking online. The pitches are online. We did everything we said, but no online journalist will publish the story. Please vote. Even if we don't raise enough money, if we show there is enough interest, we can get a winner a grant to make their game. I'm literally making no money on this contest. I just wanted to focus on something other than women being oppressed. I wanted to show that they made good games, and everyone said that's not what women in games want to talk about. So I don't even know where to start about what fucking disgusts me the most about this. We have heard time and time again over the last two to three years from every gaming journalist outlet that women are oppressed, that they uh, aren't allowed in the industry, that they can't make games, that people are holding them back, and that they just need an opportunity, just one opportunity to get out there and show what they're made of. And here a person puts together something that gives them that opportunity. Here's somebody saying, if you have a good game idea and you want to pitch it to us, we'll fucking make it for you. Show people that women can make good games by making good games and we'll help you do that. I don't see what's not noble about that. I don't see what the fucking problem with that is. But here comes Zoe Quinn, the professional victim, the social justice warrior, who will lie and manipulate like she did with Wizard Chan, like she did with Aaron, her boyfriend. She comes in, she shits on these people trying to do a good thing for no profit. She doxes them, destroys their ambitions, fucks their company up. But the worst part of this, and this goes back to her relationship with Nathan Grayson, a writer at Rock Paper Shotgun and fucking Kotaku, 
that because that relationship existed, these people couldn't get the story out. It's not just that Zoe Quinn is having sex to get good publicity. It is that Zoe Quinn is using sexual relationships with writers and reporters to suppress bad actions. I want you to try to imagine this sort of thing happening in old media. Uh, imagine Watergate. What if Nixon had driven down to the post and taken Woodward and Bernstein aside and said, hey, if you don't post that whole scandal thing, I'll give you both a blowjob. How, how about a Hummer in the fucking printing room? Just uh, don't publish anything. And yet it goes deeper. Remember how I mentioned Brandon McCartan? And also Robin Arnott. Take a look at this. Now, yesterday, Phil Fish, a indie game dev who made Fez, went on a fucking tirade on Twitter, defending Zoe Quinn and saying that people who were targeting her were bastards and cowards and that you shouldn't attack a strong, brave, independent woman. Basically parroting all those fucking ideas that we've been reading in news articles that get swirled around their little social media circles. And he's saying this to all these people who are raising questions about journalistic integrity. But yet, he's making that argument. And why, you know, why is that interesting? Well, she fucked Brandon McCartan, and apparently he has a connection to Fez. And better yet, somebody comes forward and says that they were sexually harassed at a wedding. Sexually harassed at a wedding by Zoe Quinn. And Phil Fish goes on a tirade against him, basically making him back down. Saying, don't you fucking dare bring that up publicly. If you do, we're going to come after you. And the guy backs down. And oh, look at that. Look who favorited what Phil had to say. Robin Arnott. So just so we're really clear on this, a woman who has repeatedly made social justice and feminist statements about strong, uh, independent women, about equality, who says things like men, uh, specifically gamers and trolls, are terrible and they're sexist and misogynistic, is somebody who uses sex to get favors, and on top of that, is willing to sexually harass people and then cover it up using industry friends with larger fan bases. Is that, is that, do I have that right, Zoe? You not only fuck for publicity, you fuck to suppress stories, and then you also fuck people to make anybody who criticizes you go away. Well. I'm not afraid of Phil Fish, the fucking one-hit wonder indie game dev. Yeah, by the way, Phil, that's why you're not making Fez 2. It has jack shit to do with pressure or you not liking your fans. It has to do with the reality that you know you can't make another game. You are a one-fucking-hit wonder. And if you try to make another game, you're going to fail. So go on your Twitter tirade talking about Fez 2 never happening. Nobody fucking cares. Nobody cares, Phil. You are just an ugly, mutton-chop, sideburn-having motherfucker with your little fake hipster glasses that runs your fucking mouth about what game development is. You are a dipshit. And you're also a dipshit that doesn't have any fucking standards, apparently, when it comes to people you know. Now, how do I know? Maybe Zoe Quinn fucked Phil Fish. They seem to have been at a wedding together. Phil Fish seems to know her quite well, and judging by Zoe's behavior and the favors she's curried, it's not really that far out of the ballpark for me to say that perhaps Phil Fish is defending her because of a relationship. Hell, what about Patrick Klepek? Remember those conventions they did together and the speeches, Internet is Serious Business? Uh, who knows, maybe Patrick slept with her. In fact, given that this is the reality of how these people behave and that they have no separation as professionals, let's say that Steven Sotillo of Kotaku had sex with Anita Sarkeesian. Why not? You're letting somebody on staff at Kotaku who has a sexual relationship with somebody he writes about, and you don't have any problem with that. So judging from that, I guess you wouldn't have a problem doing it yourself. So maybe Steven is having sex with Anita. Maybe that's why Kotaku keeps writing those articles. It all makes sense now. We have now reached a point where it has become blatantly obvious in gaming journalism where relationships are influencing what gets published and what doesn't. It is no longer about reporting or journalistic integrity. It is about who is fucking who and who profits from it. And believe me when I say, Zoe Quinn profits from it. Her game may be on Steam for free as a free download, but her Patreon sure isn't free. Her Rebel Game Jam sure isn't free. Her begging people on Twitter from suspicious muggings to help pay rent isn't free. She is making money off the back of publicity gotten through sex. And game journalists have no problem with this. And of course, it's all the more hypocritical of them, given their stance on social justice, on feminism, on sexual equality, on gender equality, on sexual equality, on color equality, on all the buzzwords and hot topics they use to clickbait people into coming to their articles their high-handed morality and their ivory towers as they look down at us, the peasants, the filthy, disgusting, immoral peasants, and tell us what is right and wrong. And yet, right in their headquarters, right in their home, in their nest, they are doing all the things they condemn us for. They have ruined our hobby. They have shit up an industry. 
And it's not only us fans that suffer because of this. Look at Xseed. Somebody gets offended a day or so ago about a translation that they did, and all of a sudden they're getting flack left and right about that word because it's problematic and it offended a snowflake. So what is Xseed going to do? They're trying their best. They're trying to appease these people, but nothing is ever good enough. And it is perpetuated by these hypocritical cunts at gaming journalist sites that don't mean anything they print and they just do it for money. And Xseed is just one of the recent examples. I mean, here's another. Here's a journal entry that's up on DeviantArt called Save the Boob Plate. Now, this is written by somebody who worked on a game. They worked on Divinity Original Sin. Look at that second paragraph. This journal entry is all about judgmental journalism, offended by design opinionators, and the fearsome white knights that the first two bring in their wake. And this person's talking about what it's like to try to create a game when you're bombarded by these assholes that are constantly shoving their fucking message down your throat. And what makes it all the more worse is that this person suffers, not because these people actually believe in the shit they peddle, but because they make money off of it. It's, they don't care. It doesn't matter to them. Their actions speak volumes about their character. So now, at the close of this video, I really want you to think on this. We've seen what happened to mainstream media, to old media, as corruption destroyed it. Now we have online media, new media, facing the same thing. We watch as the fifth estate burns in front of our eyes because of hypocrites and the corrupt. It is in our hands to call them out on it, to bring them to task for it. If we sit idly by and we don't, we have lost. Appeasement does not work. Burying your head in the sand does not work. It is not just us as customers that suffer as these people sling shit at us, telling us how terrible we are and telling us what kind of content we should like. It is developers and publishers and artists and musicians that suffer as well because they misrelate a message from us to them. They preach about morality and social justice. They talk about ethics and an end to sexism and racism. And their personal behavior is abhorrent and completely contradictory to the things they print. They are in bed with each other. They communicate on Twitter with each other and other social media platforms constantly. There is no professional separation between a subject and an author. There is no decorum or acumen for any of these people. And you've just seen a taste of what's happening. Mundane Matt gets his video pulled down by a false accusation. Websites refuse to let this be talked about. And I guarantee you, we're going to see articles published by the likes of Kotaku and GamerRanks and others that are going to ignore these kind of accusations. And they're going to focus on how poor Zoe Quinn is just a victim or she's being slut shamed or whatever buzzword they're going to pull out of their ass to dodge the bullet coming at their head. Don't fucking let them. Call them out. Call their asses out. Are you not sick of this shit? Have your games not been tampered with enough at this point? We as consumers, as gamers, have a choice. We either back the people that make the games we like, or we let these assholes dictate to us who's going to be popular in 10 years. Do you want a, an industry that's filled with nothing but Anita Sarkeesians and Dinas and Phil Fishes and Zoe Quinns? Because I sure as hell don't, and I hope you don't either. So I encourage you to talk about this on different websites, on different social media, Talk about it non-fucking-stop. Don't let them sweep it under the rug. Don't let them avoid the fucking issue. Call them to the fucking mat on it. We have a spotlight on this corruption and on their fucking hypocrisy. Make them answer for it for once. Make them be held accountable. We, the fucking fans, the gamers, over the decades, have raised our hobby up into a billion-dollar worldwide industry. Not these assholes. They make money off our interest, not the fucking other way around. We hold the power here. They don't. And it is fucking time that gamers sent game journalists a very clear goddamn message. And that fucking message should be... I'm gonna pull the whole thing down. I'm gonna bring the whole fucking diseased, corrupt temple down on your head. It's gotta be biblical. <laughs>